So I made this turn to this, which then got a bit bigger and turned to this, which then turned to this. Yeah, pretty dang cute. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. So for those of you who are following me on my other social media platforms, you already know that I've been hinting at this Friday being another one of my new special feeding videos, a silkworm feeding video. And so leading up to that, I thought I'd do an interesting video where I show you guys how I keep the worms, as well as a really interesting thing that happened with one of them, soon to be two. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Get a bit amped up about Friday. We'll go over how I care for the silkworms, what works for me, how I raise them up to a juicy size so that they're ready to be fed to the animals in one of the silkworm feeding videos. For today's question of the day, I wanna ask you guys, what is your favorite feeder insect that you offer to your reptiles and amphibians? Let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we'll engage in a bit of a conversation also. Awesome. Also, I want to say that if you guys are new here, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging the notification bell if you enjoy learning about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different types of cool invertebrates. It means a lot to me. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps the video reach a wider audience so more people can learn about my channel and the interesting content I hope to be conveying to you guys. Well guys, these are my silkworms. I realize the container is pretty basic, but this has been what works for me. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is that essentially you want to keep your silkworms as clean as possible. Now, as far as moth larvae go, these animals are sort of susceptible to bacterial infections. And these can be more easily transmitted when you're touching them and handling them with your bare hands, as opposed to keeping things clean and using gloves. Now, I will be honest, I do regularly handle them without gloves but it's always safer to do so, just to be careful, especially if you're raising a lot of them. My care for these animals is pretty simple. I use egg carton, like so, and then I just basically stack the animals on the cardboard and just place them when I purchase them. And then the main thing is just feeding them because as a caterpillar, these animals are constantly growing and putting on more body mass. They're just trying to eat, 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 eat until they get to a large size where they can pupate, which is something we're going to address very soon. So these animals actually have a pretty strict diet. It's comprised solely of mulberry leaves. Now, fortunately, a commercial product has been made available to nourish these animals called mulberry chow. And you can usually purchase it from any store that sells the silkworms because they themselves are having to feed the animals while they're in the shop. Otherwise, generally they should be able to order the chow for you either in a dry form or in the already prepared form that you can keep refrigerated and use as needed. But essentially my daily routine as far as raising silkworms goes consists of, you can see that one's pooping right now. <laughs> it consists mostly of cleaning them out so when i get here in the morning there's usually a ton of poop in every little section of the egg carton so i'll dump it just kind of flip it upside down so it falls out and then i will replace the food so offer them fresh mulberry chow because as this dries out it becomes inedible and the animals can't get it and they need the moisture and the food so if it becomes dry and crusty it's of no use to them so they're constantly eating and pooping and keeping them clean is a priority. I've never really had to replace the egg carton between batches. That's not really been an issue. And honestly, it's probably not the cleanest thing. I'm really just using egg carton that came with my crickets and I've had no issues with that. So you don't need to go find some fancy new egg carton. I mean, maybe that's better for them, but that should be fine. Now, airflow is really important for these animals. They like to have a lot of clean airflow. That's gonna really help make sure they don't go stagnant. High humidity is not good for them. I even remember in Vietnam, there were fans constantly blowing in the room where they were being reared. Obviously they need relative humidity so that they can molt properly, but they're pretty easy going. But just, you know, don't keep them in like a damp 
humid environment. Don't put a lid over them. You just don't want anything like that. Another thing is they are a bit temperature sensitive, so you don't want them getting too hot. Ideally, they really shouldn't be going over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't necessarily let them get much warmer than that. Cooler is better, um, especially if you want to slow down their growth rate, you can keep them a lot cooler. And this also is a reflection on their availability because you'll find that generally during the summer, it's trickier to get these, at least for me in Canada. And that's because it's so hot that oftentimes when they're transported, they don't do well and a lot of them will pass. So I find that the winter and fall seasons are the best times to actually find silkworms available. But yeah, so most of the animals I purchase as feeders arrive to me in this size or I purchase them at in this size and I raise them to different ages and sizes. So an animal like this is a lot bigger. I could easily offer this to Jabba and Leela and it would be a hearty meal. Whereas the smaller ones I could even offer to my Fantasticus and you're gonna see some of that on Friday, a little hint. But yeah, so that kind of shows you how they do. Now what was really interesting is I decided last time to allow a few of the really large silkworms to just keep eating and not feed them off. And the result of that was that a few of them pupated. So they went from this to this, which is a cocoon. Now cocoons are sort of the protective layer made of silk. And as you may have seen in that last video, I showed you guys and described the human use of silkworms. Any silk clothing is produced by these insect larvae. And what is done is these silk cocoons are removed and boiled so that they can actually take the silk and weave it and produce clothing. Now you can already see them in the corner there. This silk cocoon hatched and out of it emerged this adorable little moth. So this here is a silk moth. And as I mentioned before, they are domesticated, which results in, oh, hello, you're so cute. It's unbelievable in a moth that is actually incapable of flight because they've been used by humans for so long they've actually lost their ability to fly altogether now and so they are completely domesticated similar to honeybees which i mean can still survive on their own in the wild apis mellifera but these animals would not survive in the wild without human intervention or interference human care so it's very fascinating. Now, unfortunately, this adorable little creature will not live much more than five days to a week. It is actually over a week old now, so strangely enough, it's been living a while. But you can see the stunning antennae there. It's just been chilling, pooping, all that chalky material there is, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys because it literally looks like a Pokemon or something, dare I say. It's such an interesting little critter and it's so cute. I actually made a TikTok about it. It's really taking off. People can't believe this thing is real, the way it grooms itself. It's just so wholesome. And uh, we have a really large cocoon here that hasn't hatched yet. But I was thinking it'd be really cool to consider trying to breed the animals if it becomes possible. One thing I wanted to say that's so fascinating is to think that a worm this large casts itself into a cocoon and metamorphosizes into a moth that is that small. You know, very interesting contrast, if I may say. Uh, the, the process of metamorphosis has always been so intriguing to me. It's just one of the miracles of life that an animal can literally deconstruct itself and rebuild itself into something completely different that you would never know was the same organism. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you guys this incredible little critter and then also give you the opportunity to see how I care for the silkworms leading into Friday's morning, feeding video. So, hate to say it, not trying to be mean, but say goodbye to these silkworms. They are going to be the okay. stars of Friday's video, besides Sabzi, the Tokes, the Crocskings, maybe a few tarantulas and <laughs> the leaf tail geckos. But hope you guys are going to enjoy that and i hope you guys enjoyed learning about the silkworms their life cycle and the fun i've been having raising these fascinating little insects so yeah that's kind of what i wanted to show you guys today all right guys so there you have it i'm not sure what else to say like that animal is just incredibly adorable kind of makes it hard to feed the silkworms off because knowing that they become these cute little sky puppy looking dudes 
it, it's uh it's a bit more challenging to to feed them off to something especially when you know how how dramatic the uh feedings go but oh hello you're okay just little little things grooming right now you're all right little buddy but anyhow i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoyed the opportunity to learn a bit about the silkworms their life cycle stages how adorable they end up and how to raise them that way you can kind of look forward to all of that and know what's going into Friday's video. So, with that being said, thanks so much for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see any of the silkworm feeding videos, I just started the playlist up above. Essentially, it's just the last video because there's only been one so far. But I'm going to be adding more as they come. So, with that being said, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys Friday for the second silkworm feeding video. Alright guys, have a wonderful week. Take care.